Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a quartic equation with complex numbers or should I call this biquadratic? I'll be presenting three methods and if you do know of a fourth method please let us know in the comment section down below. I'm also going to show you some results from Wolfram Alpha. So first method for my first method, I'm going to use substitution and replace z squared with something like w. This is nice because it's going to reduce the degree from a quartic to a quadratic. And I'm going to be getting w squared minus 3w plus 1 equals 0. This is a quadratic equation. Not you think it can be easily solved. So w from here by using the quadratic formula is going to be 3 plus minus root 5 over 2. Now you gotta remember, w is z squared, so to find z from here, I'm supposed to square root my expression, right? So z is, in other words, is gonna be equal to w, but there are two square roots of a complex number, you gotta remember. And we have two values for z, w, which means you're gonna have four z values. Make sense? But let's go ahead and do the following. Set this equal to z squared, and then, do a little bit of manipulation. Manipulate expressions, do not manipulate people. Multiply the top and the bottom by 2. You're going to see why it's helpful. For example, take 6 plus 2 root 5. 6 plus 2 root 5 can be written as 5 plus 2 root 5 plus 1. And it's actually the five, root 5 plus 1 quantity squared. Make sense? So 6 plus root 2 root 5 is a perfect square. So when I take the square roots here, I'm going to be getting nice results, okay? But we gotta look at it separately because we're gonna have two solutions from each. For example, if z squared is equal to six plus two root five over four, let's go with the plus sign first, then my z values, you can call this z sub one, is just gonna be root five plus one from the numerator and two at the bottom, and z sub two is just gonna be the opposite because as you know, the complex square roots of a complex number are opposites, w1 and negative w1. So those are going to be z sub 1 and z sub 2. And if you set z squared equal to 6 minus 2 root 5 over 4, then we get a similar result. z sub 3 is going to be root 5 minus 1 over 2. And z sub 4 is going to be negative root 5 plus 1 over 2. Make sense? Awesome. Now, we got four values, and that pretty much solves the problem, right? So we got four values. And these are all the solutions. Because it's a quartic, it should have four complex solutions. Make sense? Okay. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the second method. Obviously, the second method uses a different idea. Let's rewrite our equation. z to the fourth minus 3z squared plus 1 equals 0. All right, now here's what I'm going to do. I notice that this can be written as a difference of two squares. How? I can kind of write this as z to the fourth minus 2z squared plus 1 minus z squared because minus 2z squared minus z squared is minus 3z squared, right? And set it equal to 0. Now notice that this part is a perfect square and I can write it as z squared minus 1 squared minus z squared. So now this becomes a difference of two squares, which can be factored as z squared minus 1 plus z and z squared minus 1 minus z. But of course, we want to write things in standard form. Let's go ahead and write it as z squared plus z minus 1 multiplied by z squared minus z minus 1. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Make sense? Obviously, these are each quadratic equations, and we can solve them by using the quadratic formula easily, right? From here, we're going to get the following z values. z equals negative 1 plus minus root 5 over 2, and then z equals 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. The difference between the first and the second method is that we pair up the solutions differently. Here, the solutions are, if you think about the two separate paths that we took from z squared, then the solutions in each group are opposites, 
because uh, they're both uh, equal when they're squared. But here, the numbers here, the numbers are conjugates. Make sense? 1 plus root 5 over 2 and 1 minus 1. But at the end, you get the exact same set of solutions. Alrighty? Let's go ahead and take a look at the third method and then uh, what we found is going to match up hopefully with what Wolfram Alpha gives us. Okay? So, third method, we start with the original equation again. Set it equal to 0. This time, remember, with the first method, we changed z squared to w. With the second, we used difference of two squares. With the third method, we're going to complete the square. You know why? Because we can. And here's how. When you have something like x squared plus bx, what would you add to complete the square? And here's how you can find it. The coefficient of x, take that, cut in half, and square it. So in other words, if you add half of b squared to both sides, then you will be completing the square. And this will be a perfect square, and that will be a perfect square, so this is going to turn into a difference of two squares. Make sense? So that's the whole idea. And the coefficient of z squared, in this case because this is biquadratic, is 3. Half of 3 is 3 halves. And if you square it, you're going to get 9 fourths. So I do need 9 fourths to be added to both sides. And of course, I can't just add it because I already had 1. I also have to add it on the right-hand side. Make sense? And the first three terms will be a perfect square, which is nice. And then I can go ahead and subtract my 1. So I added 9 fourths to both sides, but this became c squared minus 3 half squared, something that's going to bug me forever, 3 halves. Okay, the lines need to be aligned. Equals 9 fourths minus 1 is 5 fourths. Now we can go ahead and take the square root. This is actually where the quadratic formula comes from. So if you use the quadratic formula, you would get the same thing, pretty much, right? And we did actually with the first method. Now we get z squared minus 3 over 2 equals plus minus root 5 over 2. And then by adding 3 halves to both sides, we're going to get z squared equals 3 plus minus root 5 over 2. Now, does that look like the original, the, I mean the first method? Not original, but the, the first method. Yes, it does, because we got the same value. But in a, using a different method, of course. And from here, same idea. You're going to get the same z values that are going to be z equals negative 1 plus minus root 5 over 2 and 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. Let's go ahead and check out what the Wolfram Alpha is supposed to offer. And here's what we find. First of all, a really nice, beautiful graph, a quartic equation with four solutions. Look at the symmetry. Beautiful, right? Take a good picture. And then here's the completing the square method, which gives you these. By the way, we could have used a difference of two squares to kind of arrive at the second method. And then these are all the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.